One day to fight for action. How we survive is the critical question. That turned into meaningful change. It was time. It's just spread. This Earth Day, we look at how far the environmental movement has come in five decades. He could not have foreseen the outcome of the first Earth Day. As we celebrate 50 years during a global crisis. Challenge always brings out creativity. As those fighting for their future won't give up. Tonight, what you can do to make a difference. We can all do this if we do it together. Earth Day, 50 years, a Quincy Media special presentation. Thanks for joining us for this special report to mark 50 years of Earth Day. I'm George Smith. And I'm Amber Noggle. Tonight, we look back on the past five decades of the environmental movement and what's in store for our future generation. It's estimated 20 million Americans came together on April 22, 1970 for the first Earth Day, calling for lawmakers across the U.S. to take action to protect the planet. It started as a sit-in, but over the years, it's become a day of people doing their part, cleaning up, planting trees, and teaching kids about their communities to leave them a better place for the future. But the political fight has continued as groups march to the state and U.S. capitals for climate change policy. 50 years later, people are now meeting up online for virtual celebrations as the coronavirus pandemic cancels all events. We may be celebrating Earth Day a little bit differently this year, but its message remains the same as when it started by Gaylord Nelson. Jennifer Cleasy tells us how Wisconsin's conservation governor paved the way for environmental protection across the country and at home. Environment is all of America and its problems. Powerful words from a Wisconsin senator who fought for his message to be heard. Our goal is an environment of decency, quality, and mutual respect for all human beings and all other living creatures. He got up every morning of his life determined to make a difference. <clears throat> Gaylord Nelson grew up with a devotion to our natural world, but saw it deteriorating. There was smog in every major city in the country. Our lakes weren't fishable or swimmable. His daughter, Tia Nelson, says as governor and senator, Gaylord had a power to unite people. He had a remarkable capacity to bring together people of divergent viewpoints and find common ground. And that's what he did when his colleagues in Washington ignored his calls for environmental protections in the 60s. As he said, well, what if we had everyone send that message themselves <laughs> on the first Earth Day and, and do it that way? Inspired by campus anti-war activism, he proposed a teach-in. Instantly, it catches fire as an idea in communities all across the United States. He said, define it for yourselves. What does the environment mean to you? What do environmental problems mean for you? There was a groundswell of we need to do something, but he gave it a name, he gave it a date. Tom Smith was a grad student at UW in 1970 and led Madison's response. I had no political ambitions or stake in it, except that I thought it was exactly the right thing to do. Dozens of student and community organizations came together here in downtown Madison to hold a week of events celebrating the environment and sharing information. It was a nice feeling in the sense of um, people doing this together. And we would later come and see this as, as environmental justice, a word that didn't exist at the time. The unity across party lines Support our boys. created empowerment that would last 50 Earth Days. It was successful beyond his wildest dreams because of individuals across the country responding to his call to action. A fight that's only just begun for many looking to the future of our planet. Reporting in Madison, I'm Jennifer Cleasy. The first Earth Day led to 10 years of unprecedented legislation to protect the environment. President Richard Nixon established the Environmental Protection Agency in late 1970 to consolidate federal research standards and enforcement. The same year, Congress approved the Clean Air Act, regulations to limit pollution. The Clean Water Act came in 1972 for lakes and rivers. All included Gaylord Nelson's goals as he got another project off the ground adding Wisconsin's Apostle Islands to the national park system. But many say that progress came as bipartisanship behind the movement was at its peak. Emily Fannin looks at changing times for lawmakers and the new push to focus Wisconsin on the environment. In recent years, our environment is becoming a polarizing issue. Elected officials disagreeing about what's best for our land, water and air. 
but years ago, finding compromise wasn't always such a challenge. Those are the words from our 42nd governor, Tommy Thompson. When I was governor, we, we purchased more land than any other administration ever. Democrat, Republican, Independent, we purchased more. But I had tremendous bipartisan support. Thompson, who calls himself an environmentalist, says a prime example of bringing both parties together was signing a bill to protect the Lower Wisconsin Riverway. It's more than 90 miles long, from Prairie du Sac to the Mississippi River. And nobody said it was possible. A lot of opposition, but now there's none. Thompson said the Riverway is a valuable lesson for politicians today. No one person took credit, no anniversaries or power grabs. So it's this year he's hoping to make protecting our environment a bipartisan effort again. I don't think there's enough bringing people together anymore, and I think we need to do that. Some of the most recent policy changes to our environment came during former Governor Scott Walker's tenure. Since 2011, Republicans eased pollution enforcement, rolled back protections for groundwater, and cut scientific research at the Department of Natural Resources. Democrats at the Capitol fought hard against these proposals, and in 2019, they finally got a seat at the negotiating table. Oh, we need to act years ago. Uh, and fortunately, you know, the governor, one of his first acts was to uh, put us on the on the trajectory. Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes and Governor Tony Evers campaigned to bring science back to the DNR and continue to advocate for renewable energy and preserving our land and water. Evers' first year in office established a bipartisan climate change task force chaired by Barnes. You know, acknowledgement that climate change is in fact a real thing that has been caused uh, by, by people's misuse and, and, and abuse. The task force is working to develop ways to mitigate and adapt to the effects of climate change. Their findings are due this summer. Barnes agrees environmental issues are becoming more partisan, but believes the state is making improvements for our future generation. We'll develop that appreciation, then we'll all be uh, in a position and we'll all start to think about uh, making better earth conscious decisions. In Madison, I'm Emily Fannin. Scientists say the climate has seen the biggest changes since the first Earth Day, and it's led to the drastic weather patterns we've seen. Climate Central found 2019 wrapped up the warmest decade on record in Wisconsin. It was the second wettest year in the U.S., and our winters are almost five degrees warmer now than in 1970 with shorter cold snaps. These strikes are effective where they show how many people are frustrated. A commitment to improving our climate. Coming up, meet the young people fighting for their future. Plus a UW mission in Gaylord Nelson's name. How the university has spent 50 years tackling environmental challenges through research and education. That's coming up as Earth Day 50 Years continues. As Earth Day marks 50 years, UW-Madison is also celebrating five decades as a leader in finding solutions to environmental problems. Andrew America shows us the university's impact on research and collaboration. As the world was introduced to a day dedicated to Earth, a group of UW scientists were working out how to best study it. So it was really clear that the environment was a priority, and it was really clear that they needed interdisciplinary training and research, but it wasn't clear like how to deliver that. Professor Paul Robbins is the dean of the Nelson Institute for Environmental Studies, which for 50 years has incorporated the environment into all departments at UW. Their job is not to be a big place where all the environment happens. Our job is to be catalytic, to support all the other units because the environment is studied in every college on campus. Robbins says the Institute's impact is its alumni who integrate environmentalism into work as politicians, doctors, teachers, and more. That's gonna reach more people, change more minds, drive more policy than just one more climate change chart. The Nelson Institute has been the driving force behind a number of programs, including the Universe City Alliance, a partnership between local communities with environmental issues and students with the knowledge to solve them. They get hundreds and hundreds of students and lots and lots of faculty focused like a laser on community-based concerns. Right now, the program is wrapping up in Greene County, where students took on projects from senior housing to lake conservation. One of those projects was here in Judah, where UW students worked with students here to create a clean energy plan for their school, putting solar panels on the roof. And that was really a great opportunity for our students here in Greene County to, um, to aspire to perhaps be one of those engineering students one day. 
It's the type of work that's made the Nelson Institute a model for institutions around the world. And as it looks toward its next 50 years, Robin says the Institute is tasked with bringing knowledge to as many communities as possible. We've got to talk to new publics, speak different kinds of languages, listen more carefully to community needs. But I think our message and our science are especially good at thinking about change. Reporting in Madison and Greene County, I'm Andrew Merica. Education about our impact on the environment can start early. Coming up, how organizations are getting creative to get children to care about our planet. It's a long-term challenge. Uh, we need to act with urgency. And continuing her father's legacy, we sit down with Gaylord Nelson's daughter, whose new mission will bridge the generations to inspire action. There's a new push to bring people of all ages and political leanings together to step up and protect our world. Jennifer Cleasy tells us how Gaylord Nelson's daughter is leading a new campaign. When did you know you wanted to carry on your father's mission? You know, there wasn't an aha moment for me. I always was interested in my father's work. I feel a tremendous sense of duty to tell his story, to tell the story of the first Earth Day and the profound impact it had on the trajectory of American history. 20 million people participated, the largest event in American history. He didn't anticipate that it would be an enduring event. He didn't anticipate that it would become uh, such a significant part of his legacy as a public servant. And I reflect on that and take great um, inspiration from it. Can you talk a little bit about your organization, Outrider? Our goal is to uh, engage, inform, and inspire action on big global challenges like climate change. But we want people to understand the issue. And instead of feeling a sense of hopelessness, we want them to feel a sense of empowerment and for them to see the opportunity for them to become involved in building a brighter future. What is the goal of your new campaign? To tell a story of uh, relevance and urgency around the climate change issue today, telling my father's story, but making it a contemporary story and a call to action for multi-generational, bipartisan, socially just action on climate change. Tell me about your hopes for the future. The climate change crisis uh, is urgent um, and uh, dire, uh, but I take a great hope and inspiration from the first Earth Day and the power of youth to wake up uh, Washington and take action. Young people today have lived and are living through um, uh, the climate crisis and they care deeply about it and they want action on it. My father persevered in spite of many setbacks and surely if he were here today, he would tell you that the path to a sustainable future uh, for society is, is one that must go on for decades. Do you believe the young people today, these activists are going to be able to carry on your father's legacy in a new way? I do, I think they're doing it right now. After the break, some of those young demonstrators share what inspires them to fight for their future. And what you can do at home to make a difference. We've got you covered on the small steps that can make a big impact. Our children are our future, so we need to start early to teach them how to take care of the world around us. Jessica Porter caught up with organizations that had to make some changes this Earth Day to continue to teach kids about the environment. Hi everybody, I'm Miss Susie from the Wonder Bugs program here. For Susie Greenrod, Earth Day has always been special. It's all about teaching children to to love the earth and love nature. She's been teaching kids about our planet at the Aldo Leopold Nature Center for years, but this year she's doing it differently. I've spent a very long time encouraging people to step away from the screens and all of a sudden we find ourselves as environmental educators really dependent on these screens. It's a new normal. For her this Earth Day, trying to teach kids about our planet amid a pandemic. Well, it's definitely daunting to, um, and overwhelming to say the least. Many organizations have been forced to take their teaching tools online. 
they're reaching out, engaging with them via email. They're sending activities home. It's the same story for the Henry Viola Zoo. This year's Party for the Planet put on pause. Instead, the zoo is hosting a weekly Instagram challenge kids can do from their own backyards. Going out and looking for wildlife that might be around your neighborhood, whether that's the birds that are coming out in springtime or the new um, buds that are forming on the trees. Do you think in some ways this is a little better? Uh, you know, it's different. Um, I think we're all adapting to a new world. I think um, I think in some ways it's um, there's going to be a return to the earth because of this. There's going to be a return to nature. And then once we are able to return to our regular lives or quote unquote, whatever normal will be, I think that we'll have a stronger connection with nature. Reporting in Madison, I'm Jessica Porter. Scientists work to educate our communities on our changing environment too. And many learn the most from their local meteorologist. Meteorologist Bob Lindmeyer has been studying Wisconsin's climate for four decades in southern Wisconsin. In the past few years, he's traveled the state, visiting nearly 100 community groups to explain the science behind climate change. I hope that I convince them more. If they're on the fence, not really sure is climate change happening or if it is, uh, whether it's human caused. Uh, I, I hope that I'm able to sway them and let them realize that it, that it is in fact happening. Bob says many people don't have an opportunity to talk with a scientist regularly, so he gets a lot of questions. Clean Wisconsin is tracking action to address climate change across the state. Seven cities and three counties have set renewable energy or carbon neutrality goals along with 10 colleges. Four cities are developing energy plans and mayors across the state have signed climate pledges. Some are working to ban plastic straws or bags and styrofoam. State lawmakers are also focusing on farmers and their impact on the land. Last year, creating a water quality task force to come up with new ideas. In February, the assembly passed a package of bills that includes a state ag staffer to look into grazing and grants for farmers who grow crops with less fertilizer. Activism got the environmental movement started 50 years ago, and activism can drive it into a new era. AJ Bayapur tells us how a new generation of young people are stepping up to fight for their future. What do we want? In September of 2019, climate justice. youth protesters hold a climate strike in Madison. I went to the UN Youth Climate Summit, which is an amazing experience, and I've just been um, connecting with so many other youth. 17-year-old Ayana Lee from Milwaukee is the executive director of the Youth Climate Action Team. The group's leaders say it was a productive start. We got a lot of people out to just play their frustration with our government, and we ended up like having follow-up meetings with some people um, within the Capitol. 16-year-old Aiden Dreesing from Madison says, despite the access, the group realized these actions don't have the same effect as a traditional labor strike. It's more a protest than a strike. Um, so while they raise awareness, we want to do things that are like really getting down into the root of the problem. YCAT wants to build on those climate strikes at the Capitol and take its message to local government. This month, one of its founding members was elected to the Madison Common Council. You know, most of our people have lost trust in political systems, rightfully so. Um, and so, yeah, Aiden's right, like focusing on this, on the council, I'm able to bring in the organizing skills that I've you know, acquired from YCAT. Despite the group's distrust of traditional politics, 18-year-old UW-Madison freshman Max Prestigiacomo says his position as an alder gives YCAT a real platform. I think it's really important for me to go into this council and say, you know, you've set a net zero goal for 2050. However, let's, you know, reassess that goal because it's pretty conservative. Presta Giacomo refers to Governor Tony Evers' pledge to transition Wisconsin to 100% renewable energy by 2050. YCAT wants to speed that up to 2030. We're just working on building that base up because a lot of the people who are on our side just don't know it yet. These Wisconsin teens hope to bring more people into their movement by convincing them caring for the planet is caring for their family, both now and in the future. In Madison, AJ Bayapur reporting. You don't have to be an activist to do your part to help the environment. There are little things you can do right now, even while we're staying at home. This Earth Day, Clean Lakes Alliance can't host educational events like usual. So the organization is launching a new campaign to encourage people to take action at home. They've come up with 10 easy steps anyone can do 
like picking up pet waste and litter, <laughs> composting and raking leaves. Everybody can celebrate with their family and their friends and do something small to make a bigger impact for the community. So it really fits in really well what's going on around the world today. In your yard, you can get a rain barrel, redirect downspouts to reduce runoff, or build a rain garden with native plants. Clean Lakes is partnering with other organizations to spread the word online. We hope you found a new reason to celebrate our planet. Thanks for joining us for this special report on Earth Day. Have a good night.